and welcome to Fistula Fun Friday. My name is Marianne Oaks, and I'm the Complex Abdomen Specialist at Regents Hospital Level 1 Trauma Center in St. Paul. And I am in love with taking care of fistula patients, and I also love complex wounds like necrotizing soft tissue. And so I decided to make a fistula tribe, so to speak, so that we can all kind of help one another in those really difficult cases. So please remember to hit the subscribe button. Also, we have complexwounds.com, which is the website where all this is going to be located. So if you want to go there, you can send in questions or even comments like, you know, hey, I use that product and this happened or it works better if you go like this. So you can email me direct and I can get back to you as soon as possible. Today, we're going to talk about the isolator strip and I, I want to show it to you. It's this long and it's very bendy and it has these cute little petals on it. What's nice about the isolator strip is you can use it in many ways, but the, the hard part is, is that it's a little bit more of a technical challenge. And so I'm going to go through two different methods of isolator strip use. And I'm hoping that you guys will send me some of your isolator strip use because I know there's some of you guys out there that do this all the time. Okay, so next slide. So if you have a group of fistulas and you have a big wound, like this this gentleman had this big wound, he had this group of fistulas. And so we wanted to isolate the fistulas, but still heal the rest of this big wound, right? And so I'm putting a, a non-adherent contact layer down. We're putting the isolator strip around the group of fistulas and using some barrier strips and obviously drape to get it in place and then deploying negative pressure and putting a big poaching system over the top of this. And that's what it looked like. And so one of the technique tips for this is that you have to have a barrier ring at the base. And I'm gonna go through this when we go onto the desk, when we're doing it on the desktop, because I think sometimes it's easier to understand when you're actually seeing it. I really love Adapt Paste. I think it's like the most fistula friendly paste there is. And you can also have the strip be a ring if there's a group like in the middle or on the side. And so we're gonna go through the technique tips of how to make sure you get a seal this is probably the most important one right here is where it overlaps itself like you can't just bring it right up to itself like this you actually have to have it overlap and on that overlap you have to put that barrier ring otherwise you'll never get a seal because this you're going to have air sleep you know slipping through and even if you put it over itself i think you'd still would have a bit of an air leak so you have to use that barrier ring kind of squish it in there so it makes a nice ring we're going to go through utilizing the isolator strip side to side. So you have a group of fistulas over here and you have a wound over here. And so you just want to isolate the fistulas in their own section, right? Okay. So I've trimmed the isolator strip so that the petals are still going to sit on the wound edge. And the isolator strip obviously is going to isolate the negative pressure foam, right? The little rib, the little ridge is on the bottom part, which is going to go against the wound. Okay. So, um, if I was on a real patient, most likely the trajectory of the wound edge wouldn't be this 90 degree angle. So the reality is that you would cut this more or less. Get in there, a little buddy. Let's see. At an angle as it got up to the wound edge, you know what I mean? Because most wounds kind of have a, a gentler plane, but you'd want to make sure that at least one petal sits onto the skin. So it kind of looks like this in real life or whatever your wound edge looks like is, is that is honestly what you're looking for. Okay, but for the tray demonstration, I'm going to go like this. So then on the bottom side of the isolator strip, you need to use these hydrocolloid rings to get yourself a good seal. So you're going to want to put your hydrocolloid along the entire base so that it sticks out so you can see it into the wound. Half on the back side, half on the wound side, and then continue that right up and onto the skin. Okay, so it looks like that on both sides. So see what I'm doing? You can see it on the inside, you can see it on the outside. Okay. Then in a real patient, sometimes I'll use a non-adherent contact, like this is Ergotool, Mepitel 1, 
adaptic touch and I'll put it right here in the middle so that when I land this, it lands so that you can see the non-adherent, okay? It doesn't work very well in the tray because the tray is slippery, but in the real world, it works great. So you'll put this knot adherent down and then this. And the reason it's so helpful is on those slippery wound beds, then you can squeeze paste and it sits on this knot adherent and it gives you a great seal. I just can't simulate it here with the tray, but that's what I would do if it was a real patient. Okay, but we are definitely taking care of tray man today, not the real people. So you're gonna to want to have your hydrocolloid come all the way out onto the skin. Sometimes I'll even add a section on the edge of the wound just to help with this landing. I got extra over here, but like this guy over here, I might wanna, you know, before I even put the strip down, I might wanna add, you know, a piece of this to the skin edge just so I have a really good landing zone for him, for, for Trey Man. So if you, if you look, I'm really trying hard to make sure I have all those little edges all sealed off. And then in this particular case, you're gonna to wanna to use stoma paste also. And I like a barrier ring on the top as well. And these are not easy cases, right? And then these are, this is some of the harder of the, I would say fistula cases. If you're using the strip, you you got a lot going on. So, I would like to go like this up and over the top. Okay, and then at this point, we need to put a big pouching system up and over the top of this whole thing, right? To still, I mean, we're only half done. We just have to collect the, the stool. So there's multiple systems out there. Something like this would probably work pretty good for him, depending on if he's bedridden or not. You could cut the center of this and put it right up and over the top. I actually prefer ones that have windows. Now this product, you can actually add a window Or we could do something along this line and you know go up and over the entire thing, cutting it free over the fistulas, and then making sure we get a good seal. So that's the isolator strip. Now I'm gonna go through using the, the isolator strip as a circle. And this can be a little tricky, so I'm gonna try and go through each step with you. So you want to cut your foam so that you're, you know, around your fistulas, right? So that's step one. And then you want to get your isolator strip prepared. And even though sometimes it seems like it should go this way, it actually goes this way. And probably the biggest piece is that you have to have a hydrocolloid ring in the middle, kind of like we talked about during the presentation um, to get that seal, right? So you're going to want to take some of this it's so sticky stuff. And where it, where it marries itself up again, you wanna make sure you have hydrocolloid across that juncture. And then you really want it to marry itself up. So you're gonna work it so that there's no gaps, no gaps anywhere. No gaps, no gaps, no gaps, okay? And then you're gonna bring in your second piece and they're gonna lay on top of each other in those same little crazy grooves. And you probably want a couple of what we call petals overlay. I'm just kind of making sure that where it gets, where it attaches to itself, that there's no air leaks. So I feel like we did a really good job of that. That's what it looks like on the inside. Okay. So then this needs to be put into the foam, right? Okay. 
get all your petals straightened out. So that's what it's gonna look like uh, inside the foam, which is gonna go around the fistulas. Okay, so on the downside, we wanna put a barrier ring to help us get a seal. It needs to be on the inside and the outside, a little bit like the wound crown. So it's sitting, that's why you want your barrier ring to be a little bit fatter. All right, then you're just gonna check to make sure you don't have any bad spots. So see how you can see it on the inside and the outside. That's very important. And then a lot of people don't do this, but I will put one on the top as well. It just seems like it makes things a lot easier. And then it's a lot easier to check this kind of stuff. Oh, it's stuck there. On when you have it in your hands. So you wanna make sure that the little areas like in here have a nice seal because it's a lot easier to do it when you're holding it in your hand than putting your head around a fistula patient with an active fistula, right? I put a little bit of stone paste at the base. Just and then we're gonna try and seal this up now that we have the hydrocolloids at the top, the base, and then there's stoma paste on the inner ring. I'm gonna just set it over there on the tray, so cute. Now you got your cute little fistulas on the inside. Don't stab them with your scissor. You want it to kind of curl underneath there because that's gonna help you get your seal. Obviously, we want to cut a bigger square than this, but this is all the landscape we had. But we could offset our track pad and clear drape and have the track pad go off to the side. We want to have it a good quarter size before we put down our sense of track, but tray land doesn't allow for that. Now is when you're like, where is that little leak? I know it's here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's always this junction, isn't it? almost always so we can add a little bit of paste there if it's going to keep making that noise we still need to collect the stool right so now we can add a nice big poaching system up and over the top just like we have done before with the high output corky guy and you're in good shape all right thank you for joining me for fistula fun friday we did the isolator strip if you have any comments or questions, you can contact me via the complexwounds.com website. There's a question and answer area. If anyone has any suggestions or any really great ways of working with Eichler Strip, I would love to hear about that. And other than that, I hope you have a wonderful History Friday, and we'll see you with the next series. Thank you.